welcome to today, to today's um, science hangout. Um, Maggie Woodley from Red Ted Art and Life at the Zoo. Today we're going to talk about um, creepy crawlies. So, okay, here's a, a crafty one. Clearly we're not going to be making crafts today because otherwise you'd be on Red Ted Art, but this is a science hangout. And we're going to talk about how you can um, explore science or the science of creepy crawlies at home and with your kids and make it fun and simple. Um, I just brought this along because it's cute and it kind of shows what we're going to talk about a little bit. Um, I'm going to be first up just because uh, I'm introducing the hangout today. What I made, very, very simple. Uh, we made a bug hotel. Um, you might have seen the uh, on the internet or in books or school or school books or whatever that look really pretty with lots of little uh, you know uh, textures and different you know some holes here and some soft texture there and some lines or whatever I mean this is a really really simple version so we literally took a plastic bottle um, cut it in fact I drank two liters of water just so I could make this this is my dedication to the cause um, and then we so we made two um, so I cut some, some some sections out and then the children um, filled it with different size sticks to try and make different types of holes. We also put some pine cones in and some bark um, and we also had some like teeny weeny little pine cones. So we were trying to create lots of different um, nooks and crannies and somewhere sort of we could where we could really imagine creepy crawlies going in, scurrying and feeling nice and cosy. Um, we also thought that the, the plastic bottle works really well because hopefully we'll be able to observe a little bit what's going on. I, I suspect a lot of it will be, the bugs will be going into the middle somewhere, but at the same time we're hoping that we'll get to see a little bit of, of, of what's going on. And we're going to um, we make you know, two different ones. Can you, can you tell that they're different? <laughs> uh, we're going to hang one up in a tree near our playhouse where the children can climb up and we're going to put one in on the ground and then we're going to see what different bugs we attract um, again here you can see the pine cone so, so we tried to make it different and you know you can see a little bit of the um, the bark but we also tried to make it natural so I didn't want to fill it with um, too much plastic or, or other bits and pieces uh, we just wanted to make it sort of naturey and what maybe you know a, a creepy crawly or a bug or an insect would find uh, nice and fun. So anyway, so this is just for observing science, so to speak, and a little craft. And I, I did this with my three-year-old, my five-year-old, and the neighbor's eight-year-old son, and they all were really keen and really interested. They all were shoving in the little bits and going off and fetching more. So I thought that was a really lovely activity to do across age groups. Anyway, so that's me. I'm going to pass it over to Anthea now. Hiya, thanks Maggie. Uh, I know my girls would love making one of those. What we've been doing, we've been um, talking about a particular group within creepy crawlies known as insects. Um, now the term bugs is used quite a lot um, but actually there is um, a, a true bug is a term and it's part of a group of insects. It's kind of like a subgroup um, but we've kind of taken over, the general public tends to take over the word bug and uses it to describe all kinds of little creepy crawlies found in the garden and that's not actually the right use of the word but kind of the scientists that be have kind of gone oh well never mind we'll, we'll rename our bug category true bugs. Now what I've been talking to my girls is how they can work out whether or not um, a little creepy crawly they find is an insect or not. Um, and our, there are certain things that insects have, and I've, this is my eldest, she's drawn hers, what she could remember. So what, the things that insects have is they, the big one is they have an exoskeleton, which is a hard outer shell, and she didn't write that down, but she kind of knows that. So they're unlike us, where we're soft on the outside and hard in the middle. An insect is soft on the inside and hard on the outside. So what they have is they have, whoops, I'm going to have to look at it that way because I can't see otherwise, and then I'm going to lose it. Right, I'll try and work backwards. A head... This middle bit is called a thorax and then the end bit is an abdomen and they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. They also have eyes which are known as compound eyes and they also have three pairs of legs and the legs are jointed. So the other thing that's often used to classify insects but not all insects have this, this the majority do but not all of them is they, they have antennae and wings although some insects have lost their wings so a classic one is for example an ant where you can get um, flying ants that have wings and obviously they're the more common ant which just crawls around on the the ground <coughs> now what what makes a true bug is that they they are anim they are bugs insects that don't eat with teeth and little kind of bitey things they don't chew their food what they have is um, a proboscis which is like a straw that comes out the front of their mouth and it, it's like two straws stuck together this tube and they inject saliva into their meal 
and that breaks down and turns it all into goo and they suck up the goo through mm -hmm. the other saw. Right, so what, what's, an, is, what's an ant? Does an ant do that? No, an ant doesn't. No, it doesn't. An ant's it's got, got bites, um, bites, isn't it? chompies, yeah. yeah. So lots of beetles bugs. do. Mm -hmm. They have this proboscis that kind of hides underneath and then they put it in. There's flies, yeah. some bees I think have that. Butterflies, don't they have a, um, a proboscis that curls? Um, so there's, there's quite a lot actually. When you start having a look, aphids, they're another one that um, every, all gardeners hate, but they, they've got a great one that they stick into um, and suck up through. So there's quite a lot of, um, and within the, the true bugs, I mean, there are thousands of true bugs. So you've got thousands and thousands of insects, and you've got thousands and thousands of true bugs. So you can have a, a fantastic time looking them up on the internet. We actually bought, we have. Um, a little book which is insects and other invertebrates that we use and we kind of like to have a look because it's got pictures and we can see if we've got them in our garden but what it allows you to do is once you've got a, a basic diagram that's very easy to pull together you can take your kids into your garden and they can have a look round and they can look at the creepy crawlies that they find and work out whether or not they're an insect or not so you can and, and very simple you can take point at a snail a worm, a spider. Spiders are quite good because they have to kind of make, you know, count the legs, you know, is a spider an insect? You know, no, it's got eight legs. The other thing that you can do is that they can make, you can make it into a game. So what we've got here is we've got a pile of different shaped abdomens here, some different shaped thoraxes and some heads and they can kind of take it in turns and they can make their own bugs up, they can colour them in, so if you've got young kids you can cut the shapes out and they can colour them in or if you've got slightly older children they can kind of do their own heads and thoraxes and then you can take that on to kind of modelling so we've been having fun talking about what we could use to make an insect because you need the three parts so looking at what's in our recycling bin um, what was great was one of my, my eldest was drawing a picture with a rubber Oh, sorry, a rubber and a, a pencil which had an eraser on the end. And when she looked at it, she said, "All oh, there's three parts. You've got the rubber bit, which is the like the head. The silver bit that the rubber sits in is the thorax, and then this long, long bit, which is like a dragonfly. So we stuck some wings on, which is up in her room now. I forgot to get it. But so um, there's loads and loads of making things, and you can actually take the, the concept of an insect and and, and make hundreds and hundreds of different learning ideas from it just depending on how you talk about it and how you relate it to other animals and um, there's games that you can buy so I think it's a fascinating subject and it go, kind of goes on way into their teens as well when you get into kind of like the subclasses and the categories underneath that you know you've got your insect is quite a high class and beneath that you've got lots and lots and lots of divisions that keep going down so um, makes me a bit nerdy I suppose on the insect side <laughs> Anyway, no, I'm now going to pass it over to you. Because I do think the whole classification thing, um, you know, something that we, we don't always think about what an important part of science classification actually is. You know, it seems so unimportant to, to make the distinction between a bug and an insect, but actually, you know, that's how we divide nature up. It's, you know, first you've got your mammals and your birds, and it's obviously really big categories and really simple and I think when it comes to the creepy crawlies we kind of bung them all together and think they're the same thing when in fact they're actually hugely varied aren't they? Uh, yeah and, and incredibly important as part of our ecosystem yeah. as well you know they're kind of often a very overlooked and incredibly important part of how the earth is in the balance you know so yeah I think and the more kids I think are introduced to these I think the, the more important they become particularly you know when you've got problems with the bees at the moment yes and they're trying to work out why they the problems we're causing in our environment and you go well it's only a handful of worms but actually there's hand oh, sorry they're not insects so are they but they're Carrie <laughs> Car can tell us what they are Car <laughs> Would you like to tell us what, what worms are? <laughs> Depends on the sort of worm. An earthworm and a, a worm like a flatworm are two different um, classes of animal invertebrates. So you have to get a bit more detail than just a worm. Okay, well, anyway, I sort of digressed a bit there. Anthony, were you finished? Can we stay with Keris? Yeah, no, we can pass on to Keris, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keris from Rainy Day Mum and Nature and Play, and I'm all about hands-on science. Um, one of the great things about bugs or creepy crawlies or even insects is that you can get really hands-on with your children. Um, three different types of animals lend to themselves to being investigated hands-on and in the home. Um, butterflies, ants and worms. And my favourite of the three of them is butterflies. And we started to Im 
keep butterflies from when my children have been toddlers. And it's something that I did way into my teens and even at university because I studied zoology at university level. Um, one of the, the ways that you can do it is you can easily go onto Amazon. On Amazon, search for butterfly kits. And with there, you'll be able to purchase a kit that you'll, be, you'll get a habitat to keep your butterflies in. And then you send off for your caterpillars or your eggs. The other way is to go out with a magnifying glass and discover the caterpillars. And this is what we did. Um, the cabbage white butterfly likes nettles. So we went out, investigated our nettle patches, found the caterpillars, took them into jam jars, stuck some holes in the lid, and then put some nettles in. It's really important, if you're getting caterpillars from the environment, that you also put in the plants that you find them on, because they're very specific to what they eat. So a cabbage white butterfly would eat nettles, a painted lady butterfly would eat, um, caterpillar would eat something else. So make sure that whichever species of plant you find the caterpillars on, you also put that species of plant in to the cage with the caterpillars. Um, we then let them develop, go through the growing and then into the chrysalis phase, the pupa, and then releasing them to, back to the environment. It's really great activity to do. It can take between two to six weeks. Um, can be done on a, a table in the house, and depending on the size or a windowsill. But great fun for the littlest to your teens to watch and see the metamorphosis from the um, caterpillar or even if you find eggs from eggs all the way through to a butterfly. I'm handing over to Tricia um, and I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tricia from Inspiration Laboratories and um, I have a science series, an A to Z science series for toddlers and preschoolers on my blog and we did the letter I and I was for insect investigations and so what I talked about on and that post was just heading outside and finding insects and so how can you actually go outside and look for them, where you can find them, um, really they're everywhere so you just have to kind of walk out and observe them in your backyard you, you might see the grass is like huge and vast and so where in the world can you start to look for them if you actually have any decent plants in your in your garden besides just grass that you'd mowed they're probably hanging out under some check out under the leaves under the flowers they love insects love hanging out in those places uh, you also might check the like edges of patios or sidewalks it's an easy transition place so you can find out you can find your insects there um, if you're on the trail and if it's gravel or paved walking again little transition places it's easier to find them there otherwise just have a look around and walk and keep looking and see what you find once you find them some of the things that you can do or things like that Karis talked about you can collect them and, and keep them for a little bit and look at them you can put them in little jars um, Fireflies or lightning bugs or lightning beetles, if you go out and find them at night, are always fun to put in a little jar for a little bit and then release them and let them go. Um, like Anthea talked about, you could always observe their parts and find, figure out if it really is an insect because there's uh, we have roly polies a lot around here and they're, it's really wet here. And so there's a ton this year, so, uh, there's a ton of roly polies or uh, pill bugs or I think they're even called wood lice. And so you can look at them. They don't have six legs, so are they an insect? Nope. <laughs> they, uh, they're they actually a little isopod, a little um, crustacean. So you can kind of talk about th that creepy crawly versus an insect. If you go grab an ant, we have a lot of ants around too, so you can compare the two of them side by side, like Anthea was talking about, talk about the parts, um, see the different body parts and the legs and all of those little bits and pieces. Um, another fun way to go look for them is to go listen for them. So you head out and you hear them, especially in the evening, you can tend to hear the crickets. And so can you go find that cricket? You hear it. And so they kind of go on a little sound ton around to find that little cricket. And then when they find it, they get all excited that they found it. And you can kind of watch it and, again, put it in the jar or whatever and see what it does for a little bit. Um, you can even take them and feed them. But like Kara said, you have to be careful to feed them the food that they really eat. Otherwise... Um, you're probably going to end up with some sad insects and some sad kids because they're not going to have they're not going to last for very long. Uh, watching them for just a little bit is a great idea to just uh, catch them and release. You can also 
uh, record your findings of what you see. They can keep a nature journal. You can write it down. They can color pictures of what they see or take, pic take pictures and photos and you can keep them with a, a photo book. It's always a good fun thing for them to see. Um, we just usually tend to look at them with our eyes, but if you have magnifying glasses, you know, just regular whatever ones you find, that you can always look at the parts and see the, the smaller ones easier that way. But uh, I just encourage you to have fun and go outside and look for the insects. That's always a fun little thing to walk around and explore outside. Thanks, Maggie. You can... Right. Back. Hello, back again. Um, yeah, I also think it's really good. Uh, we were visiting a friend today, and um, okay, not obviously not uh, an insect, but a creepy crawly for sure, a spider, a great big spider. And both her and her five year old little boy jump back in fright. And I think this is the other thing to remember that by exploring insects, creepy crawlies, worms, snails, all these things, it's also an opportunity to um, let your children kind of enjoy nature, not be frightened by it. Um, they learn from your behaviors. And uh, if you go, ooh, it's really gross, they'll start thinking it's really gross. So I think it's it's a really nice opportunity also to to kind of overcome maybe some of your own fears or, or disgusts or inhibitions or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because there's lots of creepy crawlies out there that aren't that creepy or that crawly, and they're actually really fascinating once you start to have a closer look. Um, so yeah, so that's our uh, Science at Home Hangout again for this week. Um, I hope you've been inspired to go outside and have a look and go on a little mini adventure and then uh, come home and have some fun. So uh, thanks again for stopping by and having a look and uh, we'll all be back soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>